Hello, I'm at the Museum of Air and Space in Paris at Le Bourget Airport. And I've spent all day being here, taking photos and uh, looking at the aircraft. And uh, to close the day out, because I have a, an hour left, I thought I'm going to take you on a little tour through the airport using the camera because I have it on me. So let's go inside and uh, see what they got. It's actually pretty cozy. First, they got this a shot. I haven't even been here yet. I might go in a room. Entrance. Entrance fee is actually none. Um, if you want to board the 747 that we're going to see, um, and or if you want to board the Concours, then you have to pay. Otherwise, you don't have to. So this is the lobby. Then take a step outside. So we're outside. They have a 747 100, uh, former Air France, as you can see, and uh, it was delivered to Air France in the early 70s. One of the first ones that they got, and uh, was retired here uh, to Le Bourget to the museum in the 80s and uh, you see the wonderful JT90 actually it turns out the light today is pretty good so we're going to walk a little step away from it so we can kind of see it and you see that shadow that's being cast and that's being cast by not this one, but that one that's the Ariane. One, two, three, four, they almost look the same. And they have one of those here. And then they have an Ariane 5 booster standing here, which is huge. And I can't even see it further out. So I'm going to walk towards that. And uh, in the far, not so far anymore, there's a Mercure, the solar navigation looks suspiciously like a 737. Parallel development, the uh, little twins, regional, um, twin regional jets were all kind of developed in the 1960s. And uh, right next to it is a DC-8, four jets, Douglas Corporation. And uh, if you fly in America, or if you uh, flew in Europe, um, you might know the nose at least, because that looks also like the DC-9 or MD-80, whatever they were called. And then also outside here, you have some pretty cool prototypes. So I'm going to go and see those. Um, walking towards the Super 4000. It's the Mirage. Um, you'll notice that it has two engines. The Mirage are actually single engine fighters. So this is one with two engines. Again, in a second. Let's go a little bit again. Light is very nice. So it's, it's very pretty. And uh, a little out of the light is the successor, and that's the current French multi role combat aircraft, and that's where the salt is selling right now. Um, this is the first prototype of that. It's sort of fall. And that has flown, if we go take a look at, um, already in the 80s, 86, since, since then has been developed. But that's the prototype for the current model of the Salt. If you're an aerospace engineer and you think you can go and dictate what the plane is going to look like, um, you've got to be lucky, you've got to be in the right generation. Really. To my right, it's the Transport Alliance Transall C. This one is French, French-German corporation. 
um, they are being replaced right now by the Airbus A400M. So that's a nice one. First flight, 1980, and Embraer is obviously a Brazilian manufacturer. And then here's the British French corporation, the Sepecat, S-E-P-E-C-A-T, Jaguar. Um, This is a Lockheed P2 Neptune. Let's see here. Prop. Jet assisted. Let's see here. And with this is what all these helpers have. The supplementers. They have a very nice seat in the front which would be awesome if you were not fighting but really on a cruise um, or a sightseeing tour so that's the Neptune um, I'll give you the Neptune with a few rockets in the background Area 5 to the left and the creative sections are on the right next to that is a Breguet Atlantic also sub hunter and uh, those were those guys were looking for the Russian subs. The Germans had had a bunch, um, and uh, again, good seat in the front if you were looking for submarines. So these are marine. Oh, sorry, I had to go get, avoid some water here. And again, light is very pretty. This afternoon it was raining a little bit during the day, and up there far, I don't know whether you can see it. Oh, it's gone. Sorry. Um, there it goes. Because Charles de Gaulle is right here. around the corner and there's a little Jaguar here and we're right by the Concord Hall that we're going to go into so this is Jaguar E and behind it is a Super Etendar it's a Dassault airplane and that's a carrier marine carrier airplane there you go and now This hall is a little loud because a lot of people are here, um, even though you can't tell from the outside. This is a flown, well, the growth flown, but this is a regular part. Um, it's Sierra Delta. It's Sierra Delta. And that's an Air France Concorde. It's kind of the sister of the one that's in Seattle. And behind it is another Concorde, and that is Concorde 001, that's the first one ever built. And then behind that is a uh, Mirage 4, that's uh, France's nuclear deterrent um, aircraft, um, which means it's a bomber developed out of the Mirage. 
What we're going to do now is we're going to get into Concord 001, the prototype. The prototype is different from bare titanium fairings for the engines, as you can see. And it has a back hatch, and we're going to walk straight into that. Concorde 001 est le prototype du premier avion commercial supersonique. Il a effectué son premier vol à Toulouse le 2 mars 1969 avec aux commandes André Turca. Concorde, un nouveau mode de transport, deux fois et demi plus rapide que ses prédécesseurs. Un fuselage très effilé pour favoriser la vitesse. Une voilure inspirée du triangle et dite delta, mais affinée dans sa forme par des études très poussées de soufflerie. Aile volante, Concorde n'a pas d'empennage et ses gouvernes sont discernables au bord de fuite de la voilure. Suspendus sous l'aile, quatre moteurs, groupés deux à deux, reçoivent l'air capté par des entrées d'air variables. Le train d'atterrissage s'escamote dans le fuselage entre les moteurs. Et puis le fameux les basculants très caractéristique nous permet, malgré l'angle assez cabré de l'atterrissage, d'apercevoir parfaitement la piste. Au moment du toucher des roues, nos yeux sont à 11 mètres de haut, 35 mètres en avant du train. Concorde 001 passe le mur du son le 1er octobre 1969, puis Mac 2 le 4 novembre 1969. Il effectue un cockpit. I can't get closer, but you can get closer. Zoom in. As you can. It is very dark in that cockpit. Alright, now the fun part is if you if we turn around, there is a little bridge that goes straight into the other concord. So we go from zero zero one into the production concord. It's going to be interesting to see the different noses. So you can see here the characteristic kind of windshield of the production concord, um, Sierra Bravo. And or is it Sierra Delta? That's that. And that looks very different on the prototype concord. One more pan. And now those people are out. We're gonna go in. So this is the flight deck of the production Concorde. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Daniel Manchon, your captain. Cheers. Welcome on board this Concorde, the Sierra Delta. Destination is uh, New York Kennedy. The flight time today will be 3 hours and 25 minutes, of which 2 hours and 50 minutes will be superfluous. And they even have a manicure stewardess back. <laughs> right. And let's get out. And here you see the different nose of the prototype, which they change after. These are the two concords right next to each other. And now we're going to go into the fighter hall. This is the fighter hall. And the fighter hall is uh, hall 8. And uh, that has a mix of, of American and uh, French aircraft. So this is a North American F 86K Sabre, also called Sabre Dog. You might be able to tell why, because it kind of has a little bit of a dog nose. And that's followed kind of by its successor right here, which is the Super Saber F100D, also North American. And then something that looks very much alike 
spruce there. It's a French one. It's the salt. Um, also supersonic fighter of the French. T6. T6 Texan, North American trainer. And then right next to the more modern Mirage 2000 fighter. Uh, first flown kind of late 70s. The predecessor kind of of the Mirage 4000, which we already saw, saw at Southman with that, also of uh, the Rafale. Um, then right next to that is a Republic F84 F Thunder Streak. You can always tell it's not that it's an F84 F because it has angled unique swept wings, which the F84 is pretty. This is what tells you that it's the F84. And also pretty significant is uh, the uh, Wagan, the Salt first jet fighter in France after the war. The uh, Salt Mystère 4A. And then lastly, Yeah. S-N-C-A-S-E This is Mistral Fighter Hall Right next to it I'm going to turn around It's the prototype hall Here's the head of the caravel, by the way You see the other stones There's a triton The first jet Aircraft from France Overall, I believe 46. Like two pretty crazy aircraft. Um, futuristic looking, actually flown. Um, one is a. Both are designed by um, the Le Duc. This one. And this is even more crazy looking. Check this out. Let's, let's see where the pilot sits. Alright, it's not going to be done with this. That is going to be nuts. But it was flown. Maximum speed, Mach 2.5. Also Mach 2. Is this first version of the Mirage 3? First Mac 2 fighter, the first of the very successful Mirage series, Mirage 3 series. That's the very first one. And that was fun. All these first Mac 2 flights. And back of that is a Mirage G8. Heavier, as you can tell. That's a big game. And that was also a fairly fast one. Mac 2.5. A trident. And another new stair for it. That's the, uh, the prototype for it, for the. the production version that we saw earlier. And then there's two more aircraft. Let's see the back of this one. And this actually is more fun from the top and uh, from the front. So there's a Mirage 3 5. Here's also a prototype. It sits here. But what we really want to really want to show you is this one. It's a pretty crazy looking one. I'm gonna go upstairs, uh, there's a little balcony. I would to see that even better. Pretty full on dude. That's a crazy looking aircraft. The front kind of reminds me of the Convoy um, B-58. And that could remind you of the F-16. But it's a first 
Max to actually flown before. Very cool. So this is the prototype collection, including the big helicopter, the uh, Super Frelon, I think, how you say it, and the fighter hall. So the side of this, let's get another look at that. From here, in the balcony, in the Bosch 2000s. Texan North Americans. And with that, I'm going to take you to two other halls. So, before I run out of battery here, the um, Second World War Hall. That has. Um, the Buko B181 aerial trainer, a V1 flying bomb, which of which it seems every major aviation museum has one, then a Focke-Wulf FW 198. Um, a flying heritage collection in uh, at Everest at uh, Painfield. Paul Allen's fighter collection. They still have one that can fly. One of those. And then what, what is this? That is the mighty C-47 Dakota or DC-3 in civilian version. I'm going back to take the pictures back here. And in, even though that's walkable, uh, I won't go in now. Just because of time, just because of battery. Here's a Casa uh, license built version of the German it's size bomber Heiko He 111. That. Then they have a Republic B 47 the Thunderbolt. Right next to it is a beautiful Mustang. Very many of those still flying around. Of course, a Spitfire. Oh, even the French fighter. And I'm going to show you one last one. So this is the early aviation collection. And they have a little bit of a in here. Really similar to uh, the Red Barn in uh, New York Flight in Seattle. It's old gear. Big aircraft. Really cool. Collection of hall rounds, balloon flights. I'm going to go through all this. Once we go around, come around this way. Some more early aviation gear. 1910, early 1900s, just over 100 years old. All those things. 
and then with that we get into the departure and arrivals hall, fairly art deco if you can tell, of Le Bourget Airport. Very, very nice. Set up. Arrivée. Départ. Gorgeous evening. Art deco style. And then it goes into the World War I collection um, that they have here, which is obviously something that is going to become a big topic um, this year. Um, now that we have uh, 100 years of uh, 1914 to 2014 today. And uh, so that's going to be a big deal. Um, presumably on TV and people are going to be remembering all the carnage, the horribleness of uh, the First World War. And so there's a huge collection here and I can't go through all this. So it was a little tour through the museum, Le Bourget, and uh, now I'm going to go drive home. <laughs> 